Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today as I go over the ultra low latency vector search capabilities in MemoryDB for Redis. My name is Lakshmi Perry and I'm a specialist solutions architect at AWS. We will talk about for the role of vector databases in generative AI applications, learn about Amazon MemoryDB and its vector search capabilities. I'll show you a demo on how to get started and use MemoryDB as a vector store for your Gen AI applications. We are in this wave of generative AI and seeing the innovative power of Gen AI. Whether you're building chatbots or applications for image generation, image search, usually you would start to think about it from your large language models, foundation models, and their applications. Really though, that's just the tip of the iceberg. As you start to dive deeper, you uncover the whole new world of things that you now need to pay close attention to. The foundation model, tailoring these foundation models with your corporate data, from your data store. Data becomes your differentiator. Vector databases that augment the knowledge of foundation models with the context specific to your organization. And then agents to automate some or most of this work at scale. Today, we wanna to focus on the role of vector databases and memory DB in particular as a data store for building generative AI applications. Vector embeddings represent words, phrases, or entities as numerical um, values in a multidimensional space. In this example, words or items with similar meanings are mapped closer together in the space. This representation captures the semantic relationships enabling generative AI applications to understand the similarities between the words or entities. On Bedrock, you have multiple embedding models like Titan and Cohere to transform the words into vectors. An embedding space would then start to look something like this. This is a three-dimensional um, example, but then as your number of dimensions increase, it can get to be an enormous scale. Similarity search involves finding data points that are most similar to a given query. Distance metrics, such as Euclidean distance or cosine similarity, quantify the similarity between these vectors. These metrics play a crucial role in various tasks. In recommendation systems, for example, similarity search helps identify the products or contents similar to what the user has previously interacted with. In image recognition, it assists in identifying visually similar images. By employing these distance metrics, the applications can accurately assess the similarity and make relevant uh, recommendations. Let's take an example of a rental company that wants to build a chatbot for their reservation portal. You have your operational data store that stores the facts, profiles, and the user history. So we have the rental car information, the duration of the rental, the profile data. Now the customer asks a question if they can return a rental before noon or after noon. Will they be charged extra or not? We also have this data in a collection of documents, say a policy repository. So we go in and check for what are the terms and conditions and commitments for these customers. Effectively, you're doing a similarity search and providing this as a context to the foundation model. The external policies to store the repository here can be in your vector database. And this architecture pattern is what we refer to as RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, retrieving the relevant data from your policy store and augmenting this to the knowledge of your um, augmenting this knowledge to the LLMs. As we saw with the chatbot example, co-locating your operational data stores and the vector embeddings is ideal. Vectors are really evolving to be another data type, so if we're doing similarity search, having these capabilities on your existing data space services will help avoid the need of data sync and then ensure data integrity. This also helps simplify your architecture. We have a wide array of purpose-built databases, and here's a quick uh, view of our current portfolio that supports the vector search capabilities. If in your application you have a requirement for low latency, high throughput with high recall rate, then MemoryDB is the ideal fit. So let's dig in and see what is Amazon MemoryDB. MemoryDB is the AWS in-memory database option and the only Redis compatible solution out there that automatically stores data redundantly across multiple availability zones using distributed transaction log. 
With this approach, every time MemoryDB acknowledges a write request, data will be stored across multiple AZs before responding it back to the client. Rather than in adding an in-memory cache to a disk-based system, MemoryDB has a memory-centric architecture. Your applications now have the sub-millisecond uh, response times and are, are highly available. Because of this unique blend of performance and durability, MemoryDB is well suited for providing the high speed vector search functionality. MemoryDB can also integrate seamlessly with your existing AWS services, allowing you to access the metrics through CloudWatch, trigger notifications from SNS, secure your backups on S3 with your KMS keys. Let's talk about Redis quickly before I dig in into the vector search capabilities available on MemoryDB. Redis is an in-memory key value engine and its data types or data structures gives you the flexibility to implement it for different other architectures as use cases as you can see on this um, screen. In our content today, we will focus on hashes and JSON objects as these are the options available for storing the vector embedding and utilizing the MemoryDB's vector search capabilities. We announced vector search for MemoryDB, which is now available in preview. MemoryDB provides one of the fastest vector search experiences available on AWS, allowing you to achieve the near real time similarity search results in your application. With MemoryDB, you can perform the queries with a single digit millisecond latencies. Not only that, as you're adding new data or updating existing data, MemoryDB streams these updates to the search index in milliseconds. So the subsequent queries have the latest results in near real time. MemoryDB scales up to tens of thousands of vector queries per second, even when requiring 99% recall or more. You can achieve the ultra fast vector, vector performance without um, sacrificing on result relevancy. We've designed our preview scope in such a way that it allows customers to get familiar with the MemoryDB vector APIs with its performance profile. You can see that in preview today, it's available for five AWS regions at no additional cost. In preview, we provide Redis version seven support and, supports, and support for two types of vector embeddings, um, vector indexing, flat and HNSW, and multiple distance measures like the Euclidean cosine and dot product for your similarity search. And you have the ability to apply pre-filters to the queries. MemoryDB supports searching without an index. So this means you can, every search function will need to run through the entire data set that has been selected. You, this can work very well for your small data without um, additional memory and uh, doesn't need any additional memory. But for the large data set, an index like HNSW um, should be used. It's a very popular vector similarity search uh, mechanism, and it's ideal for searching where scanning through the entire data set isn't a practical option. So let's see what this ultra um, fast response time and um, high, high recalls uh, mean actually in terms of benchmarking. We chose to use big ANA data set with 10 million vectors and 128 dimensions, each using an R6G 8x large. So we have one primary and five read replicas. This data set is well-known data set for vector search benchmarks. And as noted earlier, HNSW is the ideal indexing measure for high performance. As you can see, MemoryDB exhibits high queries per second with greater than 95% recall. Very high relevancy results, right? And as the QPS um, remains high, even as the recall rates go 99%, so at, um, we, we have greater than 29, 20, 99% recall, but then 26,000 queries per second. Performance like this at such high level of recall are possible with memory TP because not only the index is in memory, but also the entire data set. So how would you go about implementing uh, memory TP as a vector data booster? In preview, is this publicly available? So you can access it uh, through an API and you would be able to provision your MemoryDB cluster with version 7.1 with a single shard configuration. And if you have um, 
high query throughput, then you could spin up to five read replicas. So let's see how to implement this. We will start off with provisioning a MemoryDB cluster and with vector search capabilities enabled. I'm going to call my cluster semantic search, which is the example that I will demo for you today. I would create it in the same subnet group that I have existing, or maybe you can also use a new subnet group. You would select this uh, radio button here, enable the vector search. So this comes default with the version 7.1. Um, and you would select the node type that you want to do R7Gs or R6Gs. And um, we could have one to five read, zero to five read replicas. Am I going to select one read replica to match the query throughput? I would then also select the security groups uh, where which applications ha can have access to my memory DB cluster. Um, provide whether I'm using the AWS own keys or customer managed keys for encryption for my backups. And for encryption in transit, I would select to use TLS. And then for an access control list, I would say open access. Automatic snapshots, I would enable the automatic snapshot and provide a retention period. Um, because this is my dev cluster, I do not have a preferred maintenance window. And then I would tag these cluster uh, saying this is a development cluster. And then that's all the settings I would specify for creating the memory DB cluster. I already have a cluster provision. So let's just get right in in how to do the semantic search. So um, semantic search basically is a machine learning technique to understand the meaning of what we're searching with um, with the intent as well. For example, when we search questions from Stack Overflow, we want to find questions that are semantically similar to our question. So we can view the most relevant answer. Semantic search is also used in e-commerce websites. For example, if we want to buy a headset from Amazon, we can get a general information from the product title, description, and other features as we can see here. However, we may have questions about the headset. We want to search the questions asked by other users to find the answers. When we type in our questions, we want to find semantically similar questions which have the same meaning while using the different words. So this is an example of semantic search which will help us return more relevant results. Suppose I want to ask if this headset is compatible with Windows 10 or maybe Xbox or does it work with my Apple uh, MacBook. For all of this, um, we could run the question and then find the um, as a query and then the data set that we would load in will return the results with uh, the question and the answers that are more closer to the question that I have posed. So let me walk you through my Jupyter notebook where I have implemented this. So I'm using um, open source sentence transformers for generating the embeddings and um, using in Redis Pi for creating the indexes loading um, the data into Redis and performing the similarity search functionality. So I would connect my check my connectivity to memory DB, copy the data set locally, uh, and then prepare the headset data, the PQA data set. So primarily what I'm doing here, I am um, accessing this website where I have um, the product Q&A data, getting the JSON data set, and then loading it into my data frame. I would then create the vector embeddings for the questions. Um, and then this is my function to load the questions and the vector embeddings into Redis. I, we discussed that we have an option to store this as either hashes or JSON objects, and I'm choosing to use hash uh, for, for, for this specific use case. Now, this is a function that I would use to create a vector index. Let's break this down a bit. What am I doing here? Um, ft.create index would help me create my index. It initializes the initializes the vector creation, index creation in memory DP. And then let's see the schema fields that I have defined. So I have the vector field wherein my question vector is the field name for storing the vector data. Vector specifies that the index will store the vector data. HNSW is the algorithm that I'm using for efficient search. And then the attribute count, the number 10 followed by this is basically uh, the number of attributes passed uh, as part of the algorithm configuration. Um, 
and then I have the distance metrics uh, I, that I can specify either cosine similarity or Euclidean as we've discussed and then um, the number of vectors and m which is my maximum edges allowed and the default um, is 16 for and then the maximum is going to be 512. I also have the two text fields here the question and the answer. So now I have the index created um, and that's the time for me to run the index creation. All right, so now that I have um, the index created, I, I would run the load, actual load of the um, vector embeddings and the data into my memory DB. So this is the time it takes for me to load the data into memory DB. Um, and then let's inspect the index that we've just created. So it says I've got 1000 documents index and this is the vector space used. Um, for this index that I've just created. Now, I'm going to run a similarity search asking, uh, does this work with Xbox? We just saw the headset. I want to know whether it works with Xbox or not. So we pass in a query vector for running the FD.search, which is how you run the search against the Redis APIs. So the query vector would be my encoded, the vector embeddings for my query that I have in here. And then I would say, this is my query vector um can you run a search algorithm and then return me the results and let's go All right so as you can see i it takes me two milliseconds for me to run this query um and to end and then here are the results so it returns me the products wherein um someone had a similar question whether this headset would work with xbox one or not and then it returns me all these different products where someone had my exact same question whether it works with xbox so i could pick among these different product the json um different uh, headsets that i can choose which and which would work with my xbox and then use it for my need that concludes what I would like to discuss with you today on memory DB and its vector search capabilities and how to actually implement this. Thank you so much for joining me today.